Welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at one of my Patreons that is being coached by me. So if you are interested in getting some advice, sending me your clips, getting reviews and asking me any question under the sun when it comes to Discord, feel free to sign up for my Patreon and I will help you further along your journey of getting better at the game. And if you are a Patreon, just uh, doesn't matter what level or a YouTube member, you will be able to get these videos now instead of it going out for the public. So I'm going to reserve these videos from now on for the people that are actually a member, subscribed in any way or form. In order to give back a little bit to everyone that has been and will be supporting me in the future. I think it's only fair because these videos are a little bit niche and I want to be basically as boring as I can be without boring everyone else so if you are interested in this kind of content or if you want to be a part of making this kind of content feel free to sign up down below so first thing first we saw when he took off that he is running a full tank he's running default belts not really gonna work out very well i would run 30 minutes on the mf because the mig 21 mf is just slightly worse than the smt and being a little bit lighter will help in that regard and for everyone that has the money please buy the qualification upgrades for your MiG-21, for your supersonic jets in general, every jet in general actually, is going to help you tremendously in your combat effectiveness. Our sticks are completely fine, mix countermeasures are fine. The only thing that I would change here is the full tank actually, and maybe the, the, the air belt, but the default belt is okay, it's not the best, but it will work out. The question that, I don't know what his name was actually, you can read it. His question was, what do I do wrong? Because every time I open a game in the MiG-21 MF, I end up being chased by three or four people at the same time. And the game is basically over. The annoying thing about flying top tier-ish, especially in a plane like the MiG-21 MF. The MiG-21 MF is a not the greatest plane that you will find in this bracket. It is a MiG-21. It's decently quick. It has decent acceleration, but the speed loss is horrendous. And if you compare the engine on this thing to something like on the SMT, you will just have a lot less power. And it's a lot harder for you to actually maintain your energy because this thing just does not have the acceleration that it needs to have. So you are forced to play this thing relatively passively unless you position yourself perfectly. And positioning is something that I cannot teach you in one or two games it's something that comes by experience trial and error you need to make sure that you do the right thing and that's why it's so important to see the entire game from the second you spawn in because now i can see where you went at the start where you went wrong and if you went too high too low too much to the left too much to the right if you went straight in it doesn't really matter for the sake of the argument the opener here is not completely wrong because when we look at his team we can tell that it's 5.0, 5.3. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that's a little bit uh, undertiered. We have uh, 9.7, 10.3, 10.3, 10.7, 10.7. Looking like a 10.7, 9.7 match. So we are partially up tiered. I would call this more of a down tier actually. And this means that we are going to be seeing... Not the best radar missiles, but we are going to be seeing some. So we can make up for a little bit of altitude. That's not correct English, but we can climb a little bit and we can actually have a little bit of a safety net. The issue is here that our team looking like a hell of a lot of attackers. Let's go back one more time. Because we have an SU-25, an SU-22, the A5C, the Kavir Canard, the Q5L, the A5C, the Milan, the SU-25... The Milan, the MiG-21S doesn't really have missiles. And then we have the uh, MiG-23BN. So if you count all of these, we have 10 planes that are likely going to be useless. And we need to take this into account when we open the game. Because right now, we are essentially alone at the spearhead of the team. And there is nothing wrong with this if you are in a great vehicle. The MF, however, is a little bit of an MF. Yeah, you see what I did there? It's hilarious, I know. So you want to be a little bit careful because if you now start dogpiling or if you start getting dogpiled by two, three, two, three, four, five, maybe even 12 people, 
your team will likely not be there to help you instantly. Of course, right now, they're not too far away. You are just four kilometers ahead of them. This is really not that much of an issue. The issue arises when you start passing the ground pound area and suddenly half your team stays around the middle of the map and you are now 12 kilometers away. So you do want to be aware of that. You want to be aware of your team being consisting out of ground pounders. And again, that's not proper English, but you know what I'm saying. Then the SMT crashes, so you now have an even less of a fighting chance in your team. And the MiG-21S actually missiles someone with an R3R. This is good. And you are staying on the side. Up until now, you are looking around. You are aware of your surroundings. And you are just taking it easy. What you're doing here, completely fine. You're now going for someone that's high, that's chasing a teammate. Also completely fine. The only issue is, are you going to be able to help him in time? And are you actually going to accomplish anything here? When your team is looking sus like it is, you might not want to do this. Personally, I would not have locked this guy with my RWR or with my, uh, with my radar. Why? It's only an IR missile. This is radar slaving. This will help you get the missile off the rails. But this will also give him a massive warning on the left side of the screen like you do right here. This will not really help you in this scenario because you can lock this guy up very easily anyway. And looking at his trajectory, it's no use anyway because he is going to be pulling in. So if you missile him right now, he's almost 100% going to be flaring him. Okay, he dodges the head on. Nothing wrong here. Just be careful with the F5C because you're only going Mach 0.8. And if you turn around now, you are probably... Yeah, you're probably uh, trapped into his web. If he now goes for you, you are going to have a little bit of an issue. But he goes for our teammate and we are able to actually go for him. No use missling him here because he is just going to flare it anyway. Try to go for guns. Pretty decent keyboard shot. And he is an F5C, so he's not going to be that damaged at all. Be careful when you do this, because this is the start of the game. He knows you are there. Is he going to flare it? Okay, he has no brain cells. But hey, that's 90% of your enemy, so you are completely fine. Spot someone on the radar, instantly look at him. This is all fine. Just be careful with overcommitting on something like an F5, because it will wring your neck. If you do it at the wrong time. Everyone is flaring here. No real use to, to shoot missiles. Get decent target prioritization. Because you don't want to be at the end of this entire... Well... I don't know what to call this. This Congo line of enemies. When you see this, it's hard to pick a target. I get why you went for this one. Because it's the slowest. And he's the most on the left. And he's the one at the end of the Congo line. Is he a good target? I would actually say no. And I say this because you can't really kill him. Because he is going head on with us. And you are now... Everyone else here is also turning into you. You can see them on the radar. And now you kind of set yourself up to go defensive against everyone. Now luckily they're all going for someone else. And this kind of furball is looking... Rough. When you are in this kind of position... Let me... When you see this directly on your 6 and you are in a MiG-21, you are in for a hell of a game. Some games are simply not winnable. And if you are looking at our team, you need to make the impact early on. When you get to this point of the match, you are likely... You are already lost. For you to be able to win this, you need to get tremendously lucky. You need basically three of them to start ground pounding. Then you kill one. Then one of them breaks off again. You kill him. Then one of them breaks off again. You kill him. If you have to deal with two or three F5Cs at the same time. It doesn't matter how bad they are. If you are on your own in a MiG-21. You are probably not going to accomplish anything. So this is very rough. And I want to go back a little bit here. Because right now. And this is why I said maybe not go for him. We have Squad Sculpt in here. Yes, you killed him. Yes, you, you killed someone and you got some points. And that's fine. The issue is that in the time it takes you to kill this guy, you probably could have killed two or three on the deck because they were all chasing someone else. When my team is looking very bad, 
I will actually have a little bit worse target prioritization and try to kill as many as early on as I can. This will save teammates and this will make sure that I don't have to 1v7 at the end of the game. So when my team looks like the team that we have right here, you want to get the numbers down. And you want to just sneak on up on as many people as you can. And again, you use your radar lock. You are now already warning your F5C of the fact that you're getting closer. And it's really not going to help you. Because right now, you're already locking him basically the second you get a tone. Or the second he gets uh, a heat signature good enough for the missile. You do not need to paint him. Now the thing is, because you are one of the last ones left, it doesn't really matter anyway. Don't do this. Okay. It doesn't really matter because he's going to see you anyway. But using your ACM mode on planes, that it won't really help you at all. So I just turn my radar off. And this will help you sneaking up on people. And if you sneak up on people, they won't flare. And if they won't flare, they are likely simply going to die. So this is fine. You want to get the shot. You are quicker than all of these guys behind you. But don't commit. You see you're missing. Straighten out. Leave or do a horizontal turn, but make it a little bit wider. You are in a MiG-21 MF and you are going to dump an absolute metric load of speed. Look at our speed right here. We are about to go 750? 650, sorry. Yes, 640. I get it. You try to get the kill. But this guy... Right now, this setup... And I might be a bit wrong because he actually turned back into you and I... I'm not afraid to admit it. But when I saw this, it didn't look like he was actually going to fight us. It looks like he's about to run away. He then does turn back in and you almost get a shot. And because you almost get a shot... Okay, you could have actually hit that. That's a little bit unlucky. Sure, he turned back in. But what if he hadn't done that? Because now you're going 600 and you have 3... Four? How many? We have three F5Cs coming in going almost Mach 1. At this point, I am surprised you survive for another five minutes. I am not going to be lying. So we are going to extend away. We have a lot of A10s around. We have a lot of F5s around. I think one of the F5s actually tried to air brake you in the head-on. And you're going to be fine. Okay, you are just going to be exiting here because they all chased you the wrong way. That's the beauty of F5s really. But there is no backup left. And it doesn't really matter at this point what you do. I, I get why you did this. And in retrospect, I, I think if I knew this F5 would have turned, I would have done the same. And you, of course, want to get the numbers down. You want to make sure that you can do something here. The issue is there's really not much to do here. I will look for some small things that we can maybe correct. But I don't think there is going to be that much to do when the game looks like this. F5Cs... In the MiG-21 are some of the most annoying vehicles pardon me, to deal with. Because they just don't lose too much speed. Especially at high speed. And at low speed, sure they lose a lot of speed. But so do we. So it's just all kind of rough. Now you turn in. We are on pretty low fuel. So we can probably try and reverse him. This is all fine. Will you be able to get the shot? No. He actually kind of rolls out of the way. Maybe you could have set it up a little bit better. But you know things like aim are things that I can't really comment on. I do see that it might be a little bit less than desirable. But what you're doing here is fine. You are alone on this side of the map. And you need to kill someone. The issue is that the F5C will kind of kill you in the long run. But this guy is just trying to get killed by you. Which is well it's perfect. Let's see if we can get a missile off. It's close range, but he can still flare it. And the annoying part is that the F5 isn't that hot. So even if he does have his afterburners on, decent shot. Nice kill. But now, this is what I mean. Like, the second you aren't left alone, if you are in a 1v1, you can actually do something. But there's just too many of these enemies around. And you're probably just going to run. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Because I don't think you can really do anything. You're just doing a wide turn to be defensive. At this point, there's not much to do here, dude. I wouldn't worry too much about losing these kind of games. The the matchmaker at this BR is pretty painful. F5 breaks off. That's great. 
I wouldn't take it instantly because he might turn around, but I get your frustration and I get that you are kind of on the clock. So same thing as the previous one. We lose a little bit more speed than him. We instantly get behind him. Now, is he as brain dead as the other F5C? Looks like he isn't. He's actually somewhat maintaining his speed. A10 coming back. And now that's going to kind of bite us in the ass. There comes the AIM-9L. Now this AIM-9L might be very far away. But that's going to reach us. I'm kind of surprised the missile even got fooled by the flare. Considering you still have your afterburner on. Now you need to break up the loop to dodge the A10. So this is all fine. You are just completely out of options dude. You are flying... I was expecting much worse when I was reading your your messages. This is really not that bad at all. You are just getting absolutely screwed over by your team. Another pretty decent shot. Decent kill. More of the fact that it's a 2v1. Uh, F5 is crit. That's kind of unlucky. And then another one comes in. And now you are forced to take the 2v1 versus the guy that you crit. Now this is... Probably the most frustrating part about this game. F5C is tanking your shots. And then you have to face face him. Even though he's crit. Even though he's not that much of a threat. He's going to throw you up or switch you up enough. That you can't really fight to the other guy. Because he is still going to be a factor. F5 coming in. Okay we are on 3.5 minutes of fuel. We are only going 500. And it's an F5E. So I don't think it would have made that much of a difference. But hey. Wishful thinking is always nice. So we turn into the F5. Okay, F5 just turns in front of us. But we are forced to dodge the F5C here. We go up over his nose. F5C running away. And this guy is 100% going to full send it for us. He is crit. He is mad that he got crit by us. Ah, uh, that's sus. That's very sus. Okay. First real mistake. We've actually found something. Thank you. This is fine. Because you will be able to slowly but surely reverse this guy because he is crit. But here you turn back into his guns. You don't want to do this in most circumstances. I know you are on a MiG-21. And you are good at slowing down and kind of reversing people. The issue is with a MiG-21 you are also very slow and you are pretty long, pretty easy to hit. You don't want to turn directly back into him. He is still on your 6. He is losing more speed than you because he is crit. He does have his afterburners on, so he's not trying to slow down. But he is very, very slow. And once, once someone is very slow, you don't want to turn in front of someone. You're better off either trying to go over his nose to make sure that he doesn't have the... Look at his orientation. He needs to roll over and then pull up. And by the time he has pulled up, you are basically already behind him. Now, of course, we are on the clock here because there's also an F5 around. But, as you can tell... You literally just gave him the shot. Look at his orientation. He is still looking there. He's still looking there. He's slowly pulling in. But you are turning into his guns. You pulled lead for him. Now that's a small thing. Well, it's a pretty big thing. I mean, at this point, this guy should have been dead. It's kind of bullshit regardless. You get hit in the wingtip. And once that happens, okay, he can't aim. This is what I mean. Even though you might have been able to, to go up. Even though, even if you hadn't pulled into this guy's guns. You still don't want to give him the guns. But it doesn't really matter. Because this guy will come back instantly. And he's now probably also going to full send it after you. And he's not after burning. Well he is now again. Yeah now you're just going to stall yourself out. Are you going to make it? Nah. Nah there's no way. Oh my lord. Okay, I take it back. If this guy had died, you probably would have won versus this guy. Because your aim is 12 times better than him. But even then, if you had killed him, uh, you probably would not have made it back. Oh, that's also an A10. And you get killed by an aim 9 e Okay, that, th this is just unlucky. This is just severely unlucky. In general, I'll uh, give you like uh, 7.5. Out of 10, 7.5, 8. Good try. The only issue here is just the uh, the opener. I would not go for the uh, F5C in orbit. I would try to kill some guys on the deck. And I would uh, not pull into this guy's guns. But really, pretty good attempt. Not gonna lie. It's just kind of unlucky that this guy sponges your shells. And then you couldn't focus on the F5E. This F5E is absolutely terrible. He seems to be kind of drunken and not really a goat. 
I'm terribly sorry if you are watching this. Maybe you just had an off game, but uh, looking pretty sus. And then you die to, to this. Are you outrunning them? No, it doesn't really matter, does it? You are just dead at that point. GG. GG indeed. Let's look at the next one. We have another one. I'm going to actually look at the prop one first to kind of break up the video here. Let's look. Air targets. Okay. Universal. Okay. Rank. Ugh, level 10 crew. Now that's unlucky. Level 10 crew without an expert qualification. You're probably low on silver lines. I would understand that. Just keep in mind. Oh wait, you can actually check that when he presses his... He's kind of bro. Oh, he's level 84. Level 84. You're playing pretty damn good for level 84. Not going to be lying. All right. Oh, it actually says it right here as well. But it makes sense that you don't have uh, qualifications because it's very... It's not very cheap and you don't have that many silver lines because you're still grinding probably. But with something like a Spitfire and something like a MiG-21, I would advise you to at least try to get level 75. You have it on the jet. This thing... I would try to get this to the level you need for the qualification and just buy it. Especially with a plane like this that you are going to be playing a lot in order to get some resource points. It's going to help you out a tremendous amount. Other than that, it's all fine. With an airspawn map on city, not very big. You get Everyone gets an airspawn. 20 minutes is probably going to be fine. Because you want to get a little bit of performance. And in the general sense of the word... If you are able to outlive your fuel, you can start bringing more of it. If you bring 30 minutes and you keep dying because your plane doesn't have the performance, because you are maybe not experienced enough, because you are maybe... You, maybe you're just new, maybe you're just bad, it doesn't really matter what the reason is. If you are dying with high amounts of fuel left in your plane, try to run a little bit less. It will help you have a little bit of training wheels and it will help you just a little bit with your performance and it... Sure, you might not have as much staying power, but if you aren't very great at the game anyway, and this is not an insult to whoever is playing right now, this is a general sense, you're probably better off taking a little bit less. 20 minutes is completely fine. First massive issue that I have right here, you are climbing at a way too high of an airspeed. 400, this thing can climb at about 280 IAS at the start of the game. It will send you much much higher at the start of the game the lf mark 9 is one of those planes that you want to have at altitude this is not a good plane defensively and uh, yes i've already seen this clip so i know exactly what's going to happen i've already talked with him about it but i want to be a little bit more in depth right now you could have climbed a lot steeper making you a lot higher in the game this is going to bite you in the ass in the long run nine out of ten times your team is looking pretty decent but again being at a medium to low altitude in a spitfire means you are going to be defensive and defensive in a spitfire especially against multiple people at once is an absolute death sentence now you don't need to worry about every little bit of uh, temperature on the left here i would say just try to Climb to altitude, maybe use Mac or whatever. I get that you're trying to preserve your engine and that's completely fine if that's your playstyle. But personally, I just try to not get it to blink and then I get to altitude and then I start using my engine a little bit more sparingly. But again, we are only at 3 kilometers now. We probably could have been at 4 to 4.5 already. And then we can maintain the climb. And then you go for the bomber. Now... This right here is why you should not go for the first bomber. This guy is going to cost you the game. Sure, maybe not this game. Sure, maybe this was an unwinnable game and you managed to get some kind of RP out of it. Then yes, I get it. If you're trying to full send for the last guy, try to get some research points before you die. Perfect sense. I get it. But at the start of the game, when you need to dive more than 500 meters for a bomber... It's not worth it. We are at 3.5 kilometers at 450 speed. Now let's look what happens after we have killed the bomber. We are because we also turn around. If you do this, if you do this, make sure to keep in a straight line. Get all your alt back, put all the speed back into altitude, and then turn around. Why is that? Because now you are at 2.5 kilometers. You do a full 360. 
and we are going slower than we were as well. So we just sacrificed about 50 to 100 kilometers an hour as well as a whole kilometer of altitude. Keep in mind we also would be building up altitude in the meantime so you're probably looking at an energy loss of 500,322 kilocalories. Pretty substantial. And now you are looking painful. This is not what you want to see. You are now too low you are too slow and you are instantly defensive against half the enemy team. And when people see Spitfires low on the deck, especially when you are low but you are still the highest of your team, they're all going to dive on you. Now these first guys break off. Fine. Donye 335, you do not want to deal with that in the head-on. And then you see you match your maker. The Yak Tree U. Now the Yak Tree U is a plane that you can out dogfight. It's definitely something that turns a little bit worse than you. However, the energy of this thing is absolutely wild, and you do not have the speed or the climb rate really in those maneuvers to keep up with him. Sure, the climb rate if your boat just AFK climbing at the start of the game is pretty similar. However, that thing will maintain its speed a lot better than you do. And the issue is he is already above you with an energy advantage. Personally, I would try to go for the Donye 335 in the sense that he doesn't kill the B26, but he does. And you're now forced to go head on with a Donye, forced to go head on with an LA7 with the Yak 3 u on your ass. All of this is not exactly ideal. We are only going 360. Personally, instead of trying to climb up to him, I would have tried to level out. And pick up a little bit of speed. At about... Where is it? About here. I notice he is turning in. He just killed the B26. Well, probably here actually. He kills the B26. I notice a Yak 3 u coming in. I know there's an LA7 on the right. And I think... I would try to head on the LA7 here. He's going to be much quicker. The Donier is going to be pulling in in time. And you are now, mm, I don't know, it's kind of sus. You just don't want to go head on with this. He's very slow and you may be able to get some shots in. But you're better off going fast next to him, like flying parallel to him. He needs to pull lead, he doesn't have the speed to do so. And then you can maybe actually take the LA7 out, making it a 2v1 with only a Donier and a Yak 3U. But the Yak 3U, as you can tell, he's not fucking around. He's about to eat your ass. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of it. So, the 335 actually kind of breaks off, but he starts turning around. Yak 3U directly on you, LA7 directly on you. So now, it becomes a matter of how bad can they be. And I hope for your sake that they are going to be pretty damn bad. But I can tell, because I've already seen the clip and how short the clip is uh, from this point onwards. Just uh, how painful this is going to be. Now, this... Is the first mistake. The first big mistake in the fight anyway. You are going head on with the LA7. You're not really going head on. He's already pulling on you. Because you dodged the head on. And that is instantly going to put you in a worse position. Dodging the head on will always put you in a worse position. Now this is not always a bad thing. Because you are in the Spitfire. And he's an LA7. And you will be completely fine in dogfighting this guy. The issue is he already has a little bit of 6 here. And you need to work your ass off to actually get him off. And then you make it even harder on yourself by going straight. Right here you are diving out. You are trying to run away. And you said to me that you were trying to run away. Running away in a Spitfire when the enemy is one faster than you. Two is, ha is faster than you at this very moment. And also has an altitude advantage. Is probably the worst thing you can do. But right now you are also flying straight. And as this guy is pulling onto you. You are flying straight. So you are just giving this guy more and more and more six. Until he basically gets the shot and then you start turning. This shot would not have happened if you had turned a little bit earlier. And then if you turned to the left side here. You would have also turned into the Yak 3U. Making it a little bit harder for him to pull in. And then this entire engagement would have looked a little bit different. Of course we are also looking at the Donye 335. Who is definitely coming back. So let's be honest. You are probably dying in this scenario anyway. But... I'm here to tell you what could have been better, could have, would have, should have. That's my job right here. And then I misclick the number one key and we go back to the start of the video. All right. Yak3U, LA7, 
So first things first. The second, this is right here. Turn the other way. Turn into him. He's not getting the shot. You are going to be turning into... Uh, not turn into him, sorry. Ah, okay, these videos are too long. I'm terribly sorry. Dodge the head on. And pull into the left. I get why you did this. I get why you did this. You want to turn away from the LA-7. Because you feel like turning that way will turn into his guns. But if you do that early enough. Like say right here. If you just keep pulling. Instead of turning around. You can go under his nose. And you will be able to pull into both of them. But because you flew straight for a little bit. Let me actually say it in one take. So it's actually not as incoherent as it can be. We go head on. We go head on with the LA-7. We try to dodge him. Now this is already super sus. Because you're only going 450. You're turning this direction. You can do a split S here. Go down. Go under the LA-7. Turn into the Dornier. And turn into the Yak-3U at the same time. Or you want to just hammer it on the elevator. And do a loop like this. So basically do this. Do it earlier. Pull into the same direction as the LA-7. You will win that kind of fight. The issue is raid fighting is not really going to be your best bet here. So you want to turn into the opposite direction of him. And then you can also turn into that guy. Because now this guy has a very good shot. And at the same time the yak u is running trains on you. You're staying horizontal here. Makes sense. Pick up a little bit of speed. Try to dodge him. But you're just too slow. It's too easy of a shot. And the yak u is simply too close. Hit you once. Wing blows up. Now as you can tell. You out turn this LA-7 quite hard. If you keep this kind of loop up. This guy will simply die. yak u if he plays it right. Little bit of a different story. And you're not gonna. Yeah you're not gonna do anything. But. So once more, this is sus. You don't want to... This entire situation would have been avoided if you had climbed at the start. And if you hadn't gone for the bomber. Because now you are at a very big disadvantage and you need to deal with your consequences. And dealing with your consequences when you are flying a Spitfire is mostly a recipe for disaster. If this was an LA-7 and a Donier, you would have been fine. The yak you completely threw a range in the spanners here. But... You know, what can you do about it? So, for the next time, this time you actually want to somewhat turn into him. I said with a MiG-21, don't turn in front of people. Don't reverse your turn. When you are on a 3v1 like this, you need to kill them. You need to stay alive. Turn into him, but don't turn into his guns. You are able to turn near him without getting him, giving him a shot. But you're mostly worried about the yak you here. And making sure that he needs to do another full loop. Before he can go back onto you. And then that, in that time you can probably kill the LA-7. If your aim is good enough for it. Other than that. This and this is why props are so different than jets. Climbing is important. Target prioritization is important. Because your speed is not going to come back to you. In a moment's notice. And then you're going to end up in a flat spin. After. While well, being a part of the Congo line. Let's look at the last one of today. The MiG-21 MF. Now we are going to be taking off. It's probably going to be the same thing. You have air targets now. So I'm just going to think that you weren't spaded. Completely fine. Full tank. Looking at your previous game. You can probably run a full tank. It seems like you know somewhat what you are doing. Let's take a look here. We are going straight in. Same thing as the game before. Let's actually look at the matchmaker. Is that something you do every time at the start of the game? Uh, where is your team at? Where is your team at? I want to see your team. Did I miss it? Did I miss it? Well, we can already tell in front of us that we have a BN, two SU-25s, another SU-25, another BN. Oh man, this is looking hella rough. But, but we are fully down here. We are looking at a 10.3 to 9.3 match, which is pretty good. And suddenly these SU-25s become an absolute menace to the enemy team. All aspect, all aspect, all aspect, all aspect, all aspect. Now these guys will probably kill a few of your enemies. But let's look what actually happened. Team is looking decent. Can fault them. Go to the left. And this time we are going to stay near the deck. 
is just because it's a full down tier. Oh, we start climbing right here. But we are in the clouds. There's really not much else going on here. In a down tier, the open air is not as important. You just want to kind of get behind them as quickly as you can. And then hope that you can just missile everyone as they are unaware. But there are still F5Cs. Just please turn the radar off. That's better. You are not going to get very far with locking people up. You are just going to be giving them a warning. Especially planes like the F-104. The Harriers that probably don't have flares are easy targets. F-5Cs I might not even want to waste my missiles on. Because they are most likely going to dodge them even by accident. You are vigilant of the F-104. That's good. This F-5 would have no idea that you are here. But you have him locked up. You are warning this guy. Now it might be that he doesn't have any brain cells left in his head. It's very likely even because he is an F-5C. But the way he's flying indicates to me that he is looking at you. Yep. What is he doing though? I have no clue. But that's what I mean. He's just waiting for you to shoot the missile. And I wouldn't have done this. So when you are in this kind of scenario. You are directly on the 6 of an F5. Just don't lock him up. You see his afterburner. You don't need to give him an RWR warning. This guy might just have turned around if you hadn't locked him up. Because he was chased. He was flying towards the MiG-19. There's a very big chance. Okay, never mind. He just doesn't see anything because of the clouds himself probably. But this guy is now looking at you. Waiting to finally see you. And he knows exactly where you are. You are warning this guy of your presence. And he has flares. So the fact that he sees you is actually a big deal. If this is something that doesn't have flares and he has RWR. You can do this. Because he can flare it anyway. And he's going to die the second you launch it regardless. But this guy is just simply baiting the missiles from you. And then he baits you into a dogfight. And this is going to cost you a lot of speed. You don't know exactly where everyone is because of the clouds. You might be able to stay on this guy and kill him. There's a very big chance actually. But looking at his trajectory. If he doesn't turn around here. He does. Okay he is still disabled. But please keep him on that. Oh that is actually a perfect example. What you did the previous time. You were above your enemy. And then you he turned back in. This is exactly what you did in the first clip. Do you see how easy it makes it for you to kill him? He just turns into your gun. You don't even need to lead. You just need to click. That's all you need to do. You're just turning and he turns into your guns. He shot the guns for you. Other than clicking the guns. Now you kill him. Best case scenario here. Because if he had played this a little bit differently. You would have spent the next 2 or 3 minutes trying to kill this guy. Now he has one wing. Personally I wouldn't try to chase him. Because even if he survives. Even if he does manage to land. It doesn't matter. He's out of the match for now. It's a full down tier. I want to get the numbers down. I want to get as many kills as quickly as I can. Don't worry about the plane with one wing. Unless it's of course uh, a situation where you need to kill him. He can't come back. It's You're low on fuel. You, you can't turn around. He, he can't stay in the air. He's going to kill. There's always exceptions. But most of the time. It's not really worth him to chase him from this point. Okay. Giving him this shot here is okay. But the second you see him start diving straight to the deck. I don't know man. I feel like this is not worth it. Are you going to get the shot here? Let's see it. Look at his trajectory. He's going kind of straight down. I would still turn in here. But then I see that I'm missing. I'm just wasting my ammo. And at this point he's dead. Right here. Break off. Minor things. I'm not ripping on you for that. These are minor things. But this is all a waste of ammo. This guy is already dead. The second the second he started this dive. He's dead. Right here. He's dead. That's it. No more ammo. No more time. No more energy. Leave him. But he dies. That's completely fine. And then let's see who you are going to want with the RWR today. We have a AV-8 on the left. And we want to be somewhat aware of it. Because those AIM-9Gs are hella nasty. Someone is chaffing. So your flares are going to do absolutely nothing. A6E. Careful of the AIM-9Ls. You do not want to be afterburning in front of that. 
Yeah, you're just gonna go for the F5. Makes sense, you want to kill this guy. But he's gonna be too easy. Or at least for him, it's gonna be too easy to dodge you. No, I think the main issue here is gonna be the target prioritization. Because I don't think you're gonna kill everyone in the next four minutes. But let's take a look at it. MiG-21 is already going for the Harrier. Does he stay on him? Yes, he does. At this point... Yeah, probably. Probably fine. You want to free up your teammate. Easy kill. Good stuff. And then, what do we have here? We have an F8U. Ah, that's rough. Lightning. Not really rough, but he's going to be annoying. F5. Kind of annoying. Extend. Perfect. I think you overstayed your welcome a little bit in the middle. But seems fine. It's uh, it's minor. Not something I can really comment on. It's just more of a feeling that I had. I personally would not have done it. But it's clearly working out for you. Shoots a red top at you. I mean one flare and it's gone. Red tops are not the best missiles in the game. Lightning is going to be catching you. And you just kind of want to deal with him right now. And this is why you want expert qualification. Because you are instantly passed out. So. Let's see what we are going to do right here. Decent opener. I you're instantly going to get on a 6. He now needs to commit. Because otherwise he is dead. He's dead. Thank you for playing the game. Good stuff. Good stuff. Go ahead. Okay. That's just bad aim. He's nowhere near that. But. Whatever. It's a head on. I suck at those too. I can't really comment on those. Get on the F5. Careful of the entire enemy team coming towards you. And don't even worry about shooting a missile at this guy. And this is exactly what I meant. After this head-on. And this is the same thing as I mentioned with the F5 in the first game. Where he actually turned back into you. Just go head-on. And go straight. Do not try to turn for him. Even if he might turn back into you. All he needs to do is now fly away again. You're not going to be hitting him. He's much faster. And now you're going 570. Let's look at our speed. When we were going head on. We were going 900. Are we going 900? 880. Or 910. Depending on which one you look at. And there is this many enemies around. And they're all over there. And you have a teammate over there. Fly over to your teammate. Don't worry about this one guy. Because you are getting yourself killed right here. Now you're going 600-ish. You will get a lot of speed back very quickly. But you also need to shed some speed very quickly here. Because now everyone is coming at you. I was flying to some trees. Uh, yeah. I mean. Again. It's, it's a very, very bad match here. Not for you so much. I mean. This is just... These teams are absolutely disintegrating and the MiG-21 is not exactly an expert when it comes to dealing with this kind of scenario. And this is why I say skip the F5 at the start and try to kill two or three guys before they kill someone in your team. Try to snowball it. The MiG-21 is fine when it comes to sneaking up on people, shooting some missiles and getting a few free kills. It's not very good when it has to deal with two or three guys directly on its six. Even if it can outturn it, we all know that the MiG-21 loses speed very quickly. And it will be a sitting duck very quickly as well. F-104 breaks off. F-8U flies into the ground. And now we can 1v1 the F-5. Now you're going to go for the dogfight. It's a little bit sus. But you can probably get away with it. Is he getting the shot? No. Good opener. For what it is. For what it's worth, I should say. The uh, F5 can of course be an absolute nuisance. But F5Cs in general are some of the worst pilots in the game. He could have killed you right there as well. Now you will probably win this dogfight. Looking at how the F5 is flying. But even then. Yeah that's going to be head on isn't it. Oh, my, uh, uh. Alright. And this is why I hate, hate fighting F5s. Because this guy has absolutely no clue what he's doing. And what does happen, or what happens, it ends up in a head-on. And a head-on at low speed is always mutually assured destruction. The issue is that uh, he has a lot easier time shooting you than you have shooting him. But yeah. So, 
the main takeaway from these three clips target priority especially at the start turn your radar off like please it doesn't really help you i know that it feels like it's helping you but radar slaving does essentially nothing and it really isn't worth your time too much so just turn it off it's really not going to help you much and if you then stay with your team and try to pounce on people that aren't really paying attention you're probably going to get a little bit further now keep in mind level 84 people this guy flies better than most of you i am 100 percent certain so don't think that i'm ripping on you i'm just being critical the thing is with uh, and i i get why you're doing it well because in props you want to go for the high guy the secluded guy yes definitely the f5c is also a plane that i want to have out of the match the issue is if you are not gonna get a very free kill on him you're better off in the middle of the game where your entire enemy team is busy shooting your attackers they are not gonna be looking behind them they are not gonna be paying attention you come out of the clouds and you can kill two or three guys without breaking a sweat and then this game would have looked completely different one or two of your teammates probably would have survived and then they would have less people because your teammates that are alive will then take pressure off you which will also kill all the people and all in all it's just gonna be a better time if you are on a plane that can carry on its own i would go for the f5c if you are on a plane like the what's a good pick for 10.3 something like an f8e for example maybe something like an f5e you know planes that can handle their own just fine I would probably focus only the high priority targets because I know that I can deal with two or three of the enemies later on in the game. Especially in a full down tier, I get it. I get why you're doing it. It's not bad decision making. But if you want to have a little bit of a better time, I would advise you when you are in a game or in a team that doesn't look very hot, like the one with full of attackers, and you know that the enemy is probably going to be full of fighters and maybe some A-10s, you're probably going to be off way better if you just kill some guys at the start because let's look at the middle of the map here as you are chasing the f5c you're already chasing this guy and you spend let's see one and a half two minutes yeah one and a half minutes to kill the f5 and you lost a lot of energy whereas if you go towards the middle of the map you can actually sneak up onto some people now at the end here what did it look like did you show your team no you did not that's a little bit unlucky that's also a thing try to look more at your team try to look more at the scoreboard see what your team is looking like at this point it's looking fine and as i said this is kind of sus i personally would not have even tried to have reverse this guy right here like sure it looks fine and this guy is absolute dog ass but uh, you need to if you could have just stamped on the elevator you would have killed him right here if you had expert qualification this guy would have been dead but hey it's fine because this would have been a shot right here instead he gets a shot on you you would have already been dead right there and it's only because this guy look at the direction he's turning in you're turning that direction and now he's turning around again that's why I thought you were able to get the shot right here. But he goes vertical. I would have just gone under him. I said that he was dead right here. But I didn't expect you to go head on with him. If you just pull under him instead of right into him. Because right here you're going vertical. You would have been already directly below him. And then you could have gone up and over. And start on top of this guy. Going into a head on with an F5C at this kind of speed. Yeah the trade is not in your favor. Let's put it that way. The F5C is super tanky. Very easy to use guns. The guns are on the top of the nose instead of on the bottom. He already has the angle. You don't want to take it. The thing you want to do here is... Keep this direction. You are going to end up going underneath the F5C. And then you can chase him. Instead of going head on like this. But all in all, pretty decent. I am not going to lie. I'm pretty uh, surprised that you are on level 84 actually. I'm actually kind of curious now what we are looking like. Now this is going to be a bit of a stat shame. Well, not really a stat shame, more of a check. Because I wonder, and this is something that always interests me. 
are your stats showing what you can do in the game? Because very often it somewhat does and very often it doesn't at all. And that's the beauty of the game. Well, let's look at his username. Huot, okay, Huot. Is this guy still on my? F okay, Hank Schrader's Glock. Yeah, thanks. Huot, uh, SOA. Was it S? There he is. Let's take a look. Level 85. Honestly, honestly, did you play any arcades? A little bit. Alright, now this is a little bit low, but you want to look at it like this, because this will also include all the early games like the, uh, uh, let's see, oh, this is arcade. All right, one kill per game right here. Well, the SPS is kind of shitty. Not bad. And I can t I can tell for a fact you're not running qualifications. I can tell that you're not spaded, so you're probably not geeing the entire the entire thing. Now where does it start to show that you don't know how to play props? Because I think that once I start looking at the props, I'm going to have a little bit of a different viewing experience. See? Exactly what I thought. The, keep in mind, this, this thing is spaded. And this has good performance. And you can tell that this opener, even with the XP50. Now these might be your early props that you played at the very start. But it's funny to see that you do much better in these planes. Because these stats are okay, they're not bad at all, especially for your level, other than the F4D. But when you, if you flew this when it came out, this thing is rough. F3H, absolutely dreadful. F105D in the current day, absolute ass. Like sure, this thing is fast, blah, 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 blah. This thing is not good. And then these two are pretty decent. You see, it's, it's, I just find it funny. Because like the second you start looking at props, suddenly the cookie crumbles the other way. And it's just... XP50 and the F104F are just dead giveaways. Same with the uh, the Wiseman. Yeah, I just find it funny to see that what I look at, that it kind of portrays it in the stats. And a lot of people say that stats don't matter. And that uh, they don't tell the whole picture. But by seeing those three games, it looked like... It was going to look like that. But enough rambling. My voice is absolutely dead. If you want to see this kind of content, feel free to sign up for my Patreon. If you want to be a part of the reviews, feel free to sign up for a slightly higher tier. But you will see the, the tiers once you arrive. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the support. And I will see you all in the next one.